This is Roland from IOTEX. Welcome to this session. Uh, I'm talking about the trillion dollar opportunity in smart device and real world data. Uh, yeah, let's get started. Um, what is a problem? So the critical problem for IoT or maybe for lots of things today is, as we can see, we are surrounded by billions of smart devices and probably like uh, we will have 100 billion of devices in 2015, meaning for 10, 10 billion people, everybody will have 10 devices around them. Uh, however, our data, you know, 88 trillions of gigabytes of data, uh, which will be, you know, controlled by the centralized uh, entities. Actually, 99% of the data will be controlled by the centralized entities. So this creates two challenges here. One is privacy, of course, people are losing their privacy because you know other people are actually taking control of their data. And another one, which is more important, is like a stagnation of innovation because all the resources, all the data, all the devices are actually controlled by the big bodies. Um, and innovators and creators have almost no presence here. So that's basically uh, like we are seeing today, Tesla controlling entire smart car industry, maybe Amazon controls the smart home industry and Google controls, you know what? Um, so basically we should bring like a web 3.0 to the device world as well. So like the ultimate goal is basically have a self, self sovereign devices for user owned data and a free market for innovations. Basically it's easy for innovators and maybe creators to hook up his um, car with his camera, with his laptop, with his maybe smart meter in a frictionless way, which will create this integrated value chain and net, uh, network effect. That's exactly like the problem IOTEX is trying to solve. Uh, basically, like we are trying to uh, build this decentralized infrastructure to power billions of devices and machines at scale. Um, basically, gives them identity, trustworthiness, and interoperability and incentivize them with uh, token and crypto economics, uh, representing their value in a digital space. Uh, we started in 2017 uh, with two other co-founders, uh, three co-founders in total, and we have done uh, like a big expansion of the team uh, in 2018. That, that's where we start to you know, uh, build a lot of things. At a, at a very high level, uh, basically IOTEX is an open network for devices. It's just composed of different layers. At the bottom layer, of course, is a public blockchain we built from scratch uh, in 2017 to 2019, which has been launched in production uh, for almost uh, three years, serving 17 million transactions, if I remember correctly. So this chain is even compatible, meaning like we have uh, different integration with Chainlink, of course, um, the Graph, Snapshot, MetaMask, uh, and uh, lots of developer tools. Um, and then on top of this chain, like we have different type of layer two protocols. Of course, my contract EVM is part of the chain. We have TrueStream, which we have them like make a public announcement yet is a protocol that organizes at orchestra machines, which will actually go to production in about maybe one or two quarters. And the question protocol, of course, as its name implies, it's a protocol connects IOTEX ecosystem with all other ecosystems like Ethereum, um, Polygon, um, by BSC, and so on. Decentralized identity is the one basically gave the device and the apps the identity. And then on top of this one, we have you know, ecosystem two kids like SDK Wallet, Explorer, some portal governance um, <clears throat> as well. And most importantly is on top of this, like a tech stack, there are two types of applications like we're seeing already. One is more like a Web3 type of D apps, like a DeFi stuff, NFT, GameFi, um, you know, like, like everybody's known. And, and another part of the application, as we're saying, very spatial right now, it's, it's like a network of machines. I, I'm going to talk about this one in the next slide. Um, <clears throat> There are actually like a two real um, world devices, you know, actually powered by IOTEX right now. Like I'm saying, it's like a network uh, of machines. So one is you can, uh, it's a smart home camera winning like a CES Innovation Award, uh, which has been like a deployed to 7,000 families over 60 countries. Uh, it's like the principle is very simple. Like you own your private key on your Bitcoin, right, or Ethereum. 
Uh, and here is you only replied, can you own the data that's actually produced by this camera? Uh, that means like nobody else has access to your data, to your camera. If something bad you know, happens uh, to your cloud provider or maybe to some, like a manufacturer, then you're, you're still fine. So this one is really cool. Um, yeah, so it's currently like I sold in lots of um, you know, online stores. I am included, you guys can go there and take a look. And other one is more like a developer oriented, it's called Paypal Tracker. It's a GPS tracker that collects uh, the real world data, basically in a, in a trustworthy way. It comes with 16 other sensors, uh, so it can collect like a temperature, humidity, uh, acceleration, uh, and lots of things, and can pump the data back to the blockchain and the apps frictionlessly. And uh, it gets lots of tractions, in fact, right, before it's actually uh, official launch. We already like a pre-sold 300 uh, such a devices to like a developers from different countries. So those are the devices actually powered by the IoTax network. Of course, the ecosystem itself is growing. Uh, in, in the past two years, we have certain 300 million TVL, like the crypto assets on chain, 50K of like a daily wallet users. So they are using our chain to like initiate transactions with the apps, using their machines, devices uh, from 62 countries and almost 7,000 devices. Uh, of course, we are also contributing lots of like the uh, standard uh, technology, open source technology to IEEE, to ICC, and the Conf Confidential Computing Consortium, which is part of the Linux Foundation. Yeah, we, we like Chainlink almost from day one. Um, so that's why IOTEX and Chainlink are collaborating um, on this very cool concept, basically getting the trusted data from trusted devices and feeding to your trusted D app. Um, so I think, uh, so like uh, we already have a prototype that uh, works very well. Like the real one will probably will have some sort of integration with Chainlink in the next year. And on the other side, uh, very exciting, Chainlink Oracle is also coming to IOTEX mainnet uh, to, to enable this trust data feeds for the apps, which will power hopefully a lot of DeFi applications uh, very soon. So, um, like the trillion dollar opportunity, right? So, um, so here is what I'm thinking. Um, so the traditional finance and IoT are both like a multi-trillion industries or sectors, uh, but of course they are both stagnant right now. And DeFi, as we can see, is slowly taking over traditional finance, at least a portion of part of the traditional finance. It grows from almost zero to 100 billion in about two years, or maybe less, even less than two years, thanks to Chainlink's trust data feeds. IoT is still like a one that's kind of lagging behind, that hasn't been like a, a tapped into uh, in terms of like a crypto and uh, blockchain. So we we're thinking about if you know what happens if we can fusing the real world data with DeFi with lots of uh, D apps. Um, so this will enable lots of new opportunities. I'm sure like a chaining has a very exactly the same vision here. Uh, one is like a new crypto assets. So think about if we can stream in like the weather data, traffic data, maybe carbon, some data onto the D apps seamlessly, then we can have like a new derivatives, like a weather derivative, traffic derivative, and also probably like a decarbonization derivative. Those are like, a, you know, kind of new assets that don't exist in the, in, in the, in the traditional world, but will be wanted by lots of, you know, traders, speculators, people who do the hedge strategy, uh, you know, so it, it does have market fit. Another one is like a decentralized marketplace. Lots of people call this like a data marketplace. I, I would personally call it like a P2P information exchange or maybe intelligence exchange, meaning you can continuously collect the real world data in a way and exchange this information probably with some other application that needs this information. For example, maybe like autonomous cars will need some like a continuous information about the road condition like two miles ahead, right? So as a maybe um, a resident here, you can sell your, those information to autonomous cars, of course, in a decentralized way. And a certain one is like a collective utility and skill. So this one is very interesting as well. Basically, you can use crypto economics to drive um, machines at scale, right? So those machines are probably like, you know, idle in our home right, right now, like a Raspberry Pi, for example, right? Arduino, or maybe some other like a small, small gadgets or device. So they have not been used, uh, basically, 
But uh, I, I think uh, we have a chance here to orchestrate those devices in a decentralized way, basically giving them something to do and probably tipping them with tokens. So that's that's what created like a whole new market. That's why I call it like collective utility at scale. Yeah, so that that's that's definitely like the next trillion dollar opportunities like in front of us. Um, we have coined the term DeFi IoT. Uh, some people call it DeFi 2.0. Some people call it like a real world DeFi, but basically the same thing. That's definitely like a, a trillion dollar opportunity. So this is a, like a very big and a cool concept, but we have to start from scratch from like a very, very small niche. So that's why like we have been like a focus on this proof of presence and proof of anything in the past quarter or two quarters. Um, so like the idea, like I said, is very, uh, very simple. So we have like this real world, we have some sort of open devices, Raspberry Pi, Pebble, um, ST32 um, and, and, uh, and Arduino. And those things are like a produce real world data in a verifiable way. Some use TE, some use some cryptographic proofs. Um, and then data will fit into the chaining Oracle and power the apps. Um, so this becomes real because we're, we're actually with a couple of uh, product teams to, to, to use this data, to make this data basically useful for people. For example, one is Traveler.com. It's, a, it's a, like a, a travel agency. Basically, you can do your, your booking uh, of flights and hotel online. So they want this proof of presence because uh, they want to do something very fun. For example, people if you travel to somewhere, they can prove to the chain and get it reimbursed and maybe get some lawyer points. So it's a very cool concept. Another one is basically like an NFT type of game. It's called uh, uh, Table Go. Basically, hey, for example, hey, if you, you have been to like the Miami Bitcoin conference this year, uh, you can prove to the chain or maybe the app you have been there. Of course, you're being awarded with an NFT card, which is very cool, right? So you buy, you buy going to different places to collect like a different NFT card to form a collection. Then you can make a tradable and, you know, some DeFi staking farming. It's a very interesting D app, which will be launched in the next quarter. Oma is a well-known prediction market we are working with. Um, so the idea is uh, we, we, we can fit in some real-time data to the Omen prediction market. For example, oh, do I have a traffic jam on US 101 highway? Uh, probably not, right? Probably yes, um, at five o'clock today, for example. Uh, so people can just bid small things like that, which will also have some sort of liquidity. Um, another one is uh, cross-sorted, uh, a cross source 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 of machine learning that, that's called scale out. Basically, the idea is like a, it's like a um, they, they have a token to incentivize people to contribute data to their model training process to earn this sort of token. And of course, hopefully with more data from the real world, we can make this model even smarter than it should be. So that's that's kind of like the the D apps we're seeing kind of sprouting on, on the IOTX land. Very, very interesting. I encourage everybody to take a look. All right, so that's a, that's a very short presentation. Um, thank you for, for listening. So if you want to learn more information about the IOTX, feel free to go to our website, iotex.io. If you want to you know, uh, get in contact with me, no matter you're a builder, investor, or maybe uh, just hobbyist, or maybe just curious about what we're doing, my email is rowland at iotex.io. Thank you, everyone. That's it.